Steve, I told you I prefer brown eggs. But brown eggs and white eggs are exactly the same. No, they're not. Brown eggs are brown. They taste the same. The reason that they're brown is because they come from brown hens. Well, what do you have against brown hens? Nothing. They eat more food, they're larger, and hence they're a little bit more expensive. Oh, well, I happen to like brown hens. And besides, brown hens are much friendlier than white hens. Ooh. Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of One Chef, One Critic. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Well Steve, since we're cooking with eggs on the program today, I guess we should talk a bit about them. Absolutely Carl. As you know, eggs are a staple in any kitchen. They have many, many uses. Whether it be for binding, emulsification, whether it be hot or cold, you can make your hollandaise sauces with them. And you can also make your mayonnaise with them as well, mm -hmm. so to speak. So they have that use whether hot or cold. Uh, they're great for coating and breading and things like that, for meats and seafood, and, uh, and for bacon as well. But always make sure that they're at room temperature. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, there's nothing like homemade mayonnaise made from brown, Absolutely. <laughs> brown eggs. I'm <laughs> kidding. Actually. They do taste the same. Anyway, coming up on the program today, we have a, a wonderful young woman, first time mother, Vicki Murphy, who is the author of uh, this book, Mother Fumbler, which is all about the adventures of a first time mother. Vicki is also a creative director with M5 Advertising in St. John's. So what are we going to be making with Vicki today? We're going to be doing some street eats and bringing back the traditional Monte Cristo. That's why we're using eggs. And we also have Brenda O'Reilly of Yellow Belly Restaurant with us today. And Brenda's going to be making a fabulous seafood appetizer, or I think it's a martini she's calling it actually. It sounds interesting, so stick around. For a complete listing of One Chef, One Critic recipes, wine lists, and more, check out our website. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600. And here we are back with Vicki Murphy, and uh, Vicki and I are Twitter buddies, so I'm tempted to call you Mother, because that's what I call you on Twitter, <laughs> and like. you call me Wellsy, which I haven't been called since I was like 12, <laughs> but since it's you, that's fine. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. And we're going to do street food for you today. Okay. And I wouldn't impugn anything from that, but <laughs> tell Vicky what we're going to do. <laughs> okay, Vicky. What we're going to be making is a Monte Cristo sandwich, and uh, it's a bit of a renaissance of that. Um, so I'm going to be assembling the sal uh, sorry, the sandwiches with some smoked uh, turkey, and we've got some ham there, and some uh, jalapeno, Havarti, and Swiss cheese. But what I'd like you to do is to crack some eggs in there and whisk it up, because we're going to be dipping the sandwich in there. Okay. And Carl, I'm going to get you to make a little bit of salad there. Oh, yeah, I can handle that. You can. I forgot to tell you, Steve. You uh, go right ahead. Vicky is mad about macaroni and cheese. Oh, really? How do you know all these things? Because I've got researchers. <laughs> oh, my and, goodness. And uh, I happen to be wild about it, too. So that's something we got in common. I there. do enjoy yeah. the mac and cheese. But I think you're going to like I'm this. so sophisticated. <laughs> this is kind of cheesy, too. And, you know, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Absolutely. Steve, you should know I've never cracked an egg without getting a piece of shell in the bowl. Oh, well, we'll... Uh, We'll, we'll turn a blind eye to that. I'm not even allowed to be within 50 miles of a frying pan, so <laughs> this is probably going to turn out very bad. Uh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's actually a diff difficult thing to accomplish, <laughs> keeping, the keeping the shell out of the bowl. <laughs> so, Vicki, uh, I read Mother Fumbler, which is your book, and uh, you wrote in excruciating detail about uh, giving birth, and uh, I've decided that I'm never going to get pregnant. <laughs> Okay. You're welcome. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> but was it really as bad as all that? <laughs> um, it was worse because I left out a lot of detail, actually. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. <laughs> I know, and it always surprises me that more people don't talk about just how horrific it is. Like, come on, people, tell yeah. the truth. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. really not very fun at don't all. Don't spare any detail. I imagine it must be difficult for men to read. Um, you know, funny because I think the cover kind of looks like it targets women because there's a big red oh, shoe sure. on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously there's a soother on it, so it, it tells you it's about children or motherhood. But I've had a couple men, husbands of mm -hmm. friends of mine who've picked it up because it's been on, you know, their wives' nightstands or whatever. 
and they just couldn't stop reading it. Oh yeah? Yeah, really? I've had a couple of people actually like oh, send great. me messages to say that they actually understand great. their wives better now. Well, I have to say, it's a really well written book. Thank you are a hell of a writer and you're very, very funny. Thank and uh, congratulations on the book. But now, Andrew, your hubby, I assume he was there holding your hand the whole time when you were giving birth. Uh, he, that must have been a comfort to you. Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how all I remember is him sitting over in the corner eating a popsicle. Oh, you know, right. that's, that's what I remember, yeah. Oh, I mean, goodness. I'm pretty sure he was there, kind yeah. of. And you know, it's kind of, it gets a little graphic, not to, mm -hmm. to reveal too much, but yeah. you know, there's some leg holding and stuff oh, going on, so right. I'm sure he did do a lot of those things, but I was so enthralled in my own yeah. pain. But now, when you, when you actually held little Max in your arms for the first time, you must have said, well, it was all worth it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I'm just staring and staring and staring. <laughs> it's hard to stare and talk at the same time. Yeah, um, I was nice. practicing last night, but anyway. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, maybe a few hours later, mm -hmm. it sunk in that this was all really yeah. great and wonderful, but at yeah. the moment, you're just like, oh God, what fresh hell is this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, Max, and by the way, my middle name is Max. Oh, really? You didn't know that. No. Uh, and I'm sure that's not why you named your baby Max, but how, <laughs> where, where'd you come up with the name? Oh my God, this is an embarrassing story because me and my husband argued for decades about the name for him. and. Andrew had some really crazy ideas, like he wanted to name him Ace, as oh. in Ace Ventura, <laughs> or like a card game or something, and yeah, I was yeah. like, there's no way. And yeah. then he wanted to name him Red, and, and I oh. said, you know, he's probably going to be a redhead, there's a good chance. Why would you do that yeah. to him? Yeah. Um, only make it worse, you know? <clears throat> the yeah. teasing and stuff is, is probably going to happen. So. Um, he came out with the name Max, and I learned months and months later, after we had already named him Max, that he named him after Max Pacioretty from the Montreal Canadiens. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, well. But so it's cute. I'm, I like it. I'm sure so what I've done Montreal here, Canadians are happy. I've taken the sandwich and we're dipping it in the egg white right there. Eh, sorry, in the egg wash. I'm going to put that straight on the grill. So, and we're christening out. This is our brand new grill today, actually. So. Yes, this is a Volrath grill from Big Eric's. And we're delighted to be able to use it for the very first time today. Absolutely, Actually, you're going to be uh, you're going to be doing it. I'm taking its virginity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're taking its virginity. You're the one who's going to have to flip those. Okay. Oh my God, yeah. this could be really bad. So we'll, we'll just let them uh, see just just a little while first. So uh, I know uh, Max is a ginger like his mom, uh, but who does he kind of look like? I don't know. Everybody says different things. Um, mm. I don't know. I don't see him being like me or my husband. I just see him being his own little it's kind of, well, monster. I guess he's like the both of you. Yeah, kind he's of a little combination. bit. Of I mean, we don't actually know if Andrew's his father yet, but <laughs> mm, um, hopefully, it's, it's looking that way. I see some some similarities, some similarities there. Yeah. Mm. Now I want to read a little bit from the book because. Uh, you didn't sleep for the first ten months. I did not. Of uh, <laughs> little Max's life, and uh, I thought this was uh, kind of interesting. First here. You ten said, months. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, there were a few hours in there <laughs> of sleep. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm doing a reading. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, go. Uh, I was prepared for the sleepless nights, but I had no idea how difficult it would be to sleep train a ginger in the dark of night. I could see his orange wig glowing like fire and brimstone as he howled for hours on end. <laughs> yeah, you should have been a priest. There, you go. <laughs> there you go, Max. That's what uh, Mommy had to say about yeah. your uh, first time. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> that happened. It really did. Yeah, so did it drive you a little crazy? Yeah, it did. I mean, it really does mess with your faculties of, yeah. you know, I yeah. mean, if you don't sleep. Not so a lot work. of that was written by I mean, an actually crazy yeah. person. So were you were kind of working at the same time, were you? Or were you off that year? I was off that year. Oh, good. But it was a difficult year because, um, well, right when I was getting ready to go back to work, um, my father died. Oh, so yeah. there was a lot of craziness, and I still wasn't normal yeah. in certain areas, yeah. if you know what I mean. Right. And uh, <laughs> there was a lot going on. And yeah. that's kind of why I started to write, because I just, I just needed some sort of yeah. therapy or, yeah. or release or something yeah. to kind of get it all out there. So as a first time mom, what, what, there must have been some kind of wide eye surprises that hit you during the early months of, of raising Max. Can you, can you tell us about one or two? Or? Um, well, the tiredness thing, I never yeah. really realized just what that meant. Yeah. Like I knew it was gonna be exhausting and you, know, you weren't gonna sleep, but you really do not ever sleep. 
It gets, I mean, some every now and then I'll hear a parent say their their child sleeps through the night right away. But yeah, yeah. I want to kill all those people because yeah. that just makes me mad because <laughs> it's not fair. Uh, but Max, I, maybe he was a little bit colic. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so, so that part was a big but surprise. What about Andrew? Was he like sawing logs all this time? Was he, like, <laughs> comatose or no? But see, he got off the hook a little bit because I was breastfeeding. Oh, so, so you were you there had was, to be there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So would you like to flip one of these, or do you want me to? Oh, or? I could try. No, yeah, I, I, I which one should I do? You have, straight on no, that. Doesn't she have to hold? Or do you want to just get the spatula underneath it? There you go. Okay. Try not to get my nails on okay. film because I bite them because they're okay. a healthy snack. Um, okay, now put your fingers on it, and I'll just flip it over. Oh God. And you were worried about that all night. You had a sleepless night, right? That's great. Yeah. Good yeah. job. So if you want to do the others, or do you want me to do it? Oh, you, you, did I do that one? Yeah, no, you, no, you did it. Fantastic. Steve's trying to demote me. He's trying to take away my tool. <laughs> oh, I'm going to ruin your new machine. No, 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 no. That's okay, it. This is, fingers this is good. This is good. Not two fingers. Two or three fingers. That's <laughs> There you go. That's, that's even better. Yes. Yeah. Where, where is that now? One more. I don't okay. know if I wash these fingers. Okay, you're batting a thousand, bro. <laughs> Good for you. And on that note, I'm going to go to the wine cellar and get a bottle of wine to celebrate. <laughs> get me some food. <laughs> so, did you cook at home at all? Um, I don't really cook very well. No. I cook three things. What's that? Uh, macaroni and cheese. Excellent. Goulash. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. there you go. There uh, you no, go. Really classy, right? And toast. <laughs> Hey, Greg. Hey, Carl. Well, we've got uh, street food up there today. We've got mm. Monte Cristo sandwiches with eggy bread, some smoked ham, a little bit of Dijon, a little bit of bacon. I think, really, really great stuff. Uh, so, what, what do you what do you think we should have with this heady kind of sandwich? Uh, that's. It sounds like a great dish, Carl. Um, I, I picked three wines uh, here, and I think that all three will complement in different ways. Uh, the first is Hardy's Not a Chill Chardonnay. This is a Chardonnay that has a little bit of oak on it, and I, I like the idea of the uh, oak Chardonnay pairing with the the smoked ham. The smoke will will uh, they'll they'll work with each other uh, as well. Uh, this has a nice creamy texture, which will go with the uh, uh, that buttery, uh, mm. yolky, eggy mm -hmm. flavor that you were just describing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this retails for $13.99 at NLC. Not to be confused with Norman Hardy Wine of Canada. This is an Australian Hardy's, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Very different styles. Uh, Norman Hardy wines are um, uh, have more minerality. They're, mm -hmm. they're quite different. Okay. Um, the Speaking of Canadian Chardonnay, though, the next wine is, in fact, Canadian Chardonnay, and it's from Henry of Pelham, and they are located in Niagara. And this Chardonnay uh, is is an unoaked Chardonnay. So we have more steely minerality. I really think the uh, pear apple flavors of this wine will go nicely with the Dijon mustard that you described in the dish. Uh, this is about $17.99 at NLC. Okay. And last but not least, we have a Spanish wine. If you're feeling something red, uh, this is 100% Tempranillo from a winery called Emilio Moro, and this is their Finco Risoso. Um, it's really just a, a medium-bodied wine, very fruit-driven, mm -hmm. uh, blackberry, plum, raspberry, mm -hmm. uh, soft and easy, not too tannic. It mm -hmm. shouldn't overwhelm the dish. So if you're feeling something red, this will be a, a nice okay. choice. Well, I'm going to go with the Henry of Pelham, partly because it's Canadian, but I also like their uh, brew-style wine, so I'm, I'm looking forward to tasting their Chardonnay. Great. Thanks very much. All right, Carl. Thank you. Okay. We'll just take our final Monte Cristo off there, put it on the cutting board nice slice in half and as we can see that cheese is just starting to melt there and drizzle down we've got our, our champagne vinaigrette with our greens and uh, let's go and meet Vicky and Carl in the dining room and see if they're still talking about babies and there you go madam mm. well Monte Cristo here we go it looks great Taste it, Vicky, and uh, let us know what you think. Uh, we're going to use the fork and knife because it's a little bit big and difficult to manage. So I'm just going to take a little bit off the back here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. That brings back memories. I haven't had one of these in years. Absolutely. I've yeah. never had mm -hmm. one. <laughs> PB and J. And a fine job of uh, griddling yeah. you did there, Vicky. Thank you. Absolutely wonderful. Now, I wanted to ask you, um, you mentioned your dad earlier. 
your dad, Jim Compton, right? Mm -hmm. um, he was a writer. So do you think you inherited some of your creative juice and, and that writing ability from him? Well, you're probably going to make me cry, so oh. whatever. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I'm good. Um, yeah, no, totally. I mean, as a child, um, you know, the way my dad played with me was to uh, give me a piece of paper and tell me to go and write a poem and bring oh. it back, and he would grade it because he was an English teacher, right? <laughs> so there was no like, let's play catch, let's go fishing. No, yeah. it was like, write me a poem. So yeah, yeah so that it was always in me too. And you did English at university. Uh, yeah. Went to university in Nova Scotia, did you? Yeah, I went to Dalhousie. Oh, cool. Yeah. And um, did you ever dream that one day you'd end up working for an advertising agency? Because you work for no. M5. Did you even know that there might be a spot for you at a place like that? I didn't know there were careers in advertising. Like, I, you know, in grade 12, I remember uh, doing a career education course in grade 12. Yeah. And, yep. you know, they tell you the, the same old, same old, you can be a teacher or a doctor That's or a lawyer. Right. Uh, and, you know, careers in advertising like what's that so um, I remember I got my English degree and I, I didn't know what else to do with that I was gonna just go be a teacher I guess mm -hmm. so I saw an ad in the paper looking for a creative writer and I thought maybe it was um, a joke <laughs> so, but I applied I've been there ever since so Wow. And that was here in St. John's? Yeah, yeah. in St. Yeah. John's. So were you, were you funny in the job interview? Did you I don't like, know. crack wise as they say? I don't know. I probably, I probably was what I known it. Yeah, it comes just, naturally to you. Yeah, so, yeah maybe. Uh, <laughs> now how, how about your clients, like these corporate clients and everything that you have to deal with? Uh, do they kind of get your sense of humor, or? <laughs> um, some of them more than others, I think. So, but I mean, I am, I am a professional, so I know, you mm -hmm. know, where to draw the line. Like, I don't mm -hmm. walk into certain client meetings and be like, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know. What's it like in the workplace? Uh, you know, I mean, does your humor kind of permeate the M5 offices? I would and, say. Uh, I think I'm one of the ones that brings the place to life, you know? Oh, I wouldn't say yeah. that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I think in advertising in general, like in a creative environment, you that tends to draw those types of people. So yeah. I'm certainly not the only yeah. one. It's just full of yeah. personality. Yeah. Now, I, we should actually plug your blog uh, because uh, motherblogger.ca yeah was kind of the genesis of Mother yeah, Fumbler, yes, correct? Yes, yeah. yeah. Like, I never dreamed of writing a book. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I, I heard about this thing called a blog, and so uh, I started one yep. just to kind of vent all my motherhood right. trials and yep. tribulations, uh, all steeped in humor, of course. And, sure, uh, yeah. Yeah, and from there, people just kept saying, you should write a book, you should write a book. Mm -hmm. And I was always thinking, well, why would I write a book? It's already there online. Go yeah. read it. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, do you have plans to write another book? I would like to, and I have ideas, mm -hmm. but... Um, you don't want to share them now because you're afraid you might jinx it. <laughs> pretty much, and also because I know you'll go and steal my idea okay. and write it yourself. Yeah, I might do. <laughs> anyway, uh, listen, it's been a slice. Thanks for being on One Chef, One Critic, Vicki. Thank Cheers. you so much there for having go. me. There we go. The mother fumbler herself, Vicki Murphy, and we'll be back with Chef... This is the Ginger Show today, by the way. We're back with another Ginger, Brenda O'Reilly of Yellow Belly. Stick around. Well, Yellow Bellies and O'Reilly's in downtown St. John's are two places that really do make an effort to create fun times, complemented by great food and good uh, drink. <laughs> in fact, at Yellow Bellies, they even brew the beer for you. And whether the food is paired with wine or beer, it's always deliciously satisfying. Care, detail, attention, those are bywords of the owners at Yellow Bellies and O'Reilly's. And we have one of them with us now, Brenda O'Reilly. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me back again. It's a pleasure. Oh, it's pleasure. Always, always nice to have pleasure you on Pleasure to be on One Chef, One Critic. Yeah. So speaking of mixology and alcohol, yeah. <laughs> we've combined the, uh, an appetizer at Yellow Belly on our new menu. We've got, um, it's called a baby shrimp salad martini. Ooh. Ah. Yeah. So yeah. That, so I, like, on. I like all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> me too. So basically, you know, down in the underbelly, we, we, mixology is our thing. 
you know, underbelly. The underbelly. Oh, that's the it's our speakeasy uh, downstairs in, in the basement in of the Yellow Belly, and it's fantastic little space. But we we're always doing mixology, so we came up with this um, salad style martini. So basically, mm. what we're going to start with is the Newfoundland baby shrimp, which I adore, and it's mm. the base of our our chowders of both yep. the Yellow Belly and a rice. Mm -hmm. Great little starter. Of um, so basically, we start with equal portions of now plum tomatoes. So I'm using plum, but you want a really ripe tomato. Yes, and you want it woody. Or anything no, like that. no, so you want the ripest you can get, plum ideally, but if you can't get a plum, get a ripe one. So what we've done is we've actually um, taken the seeds out of the tomato. We only want the meat of the tomato. Mm -hmm. So good. we've got about uh, two good. cups of tomato, and we'd use two cups of, uh, of the Newfoundland baby shrimp as well. Okay. And basically, so equal portions of the shrimp and the um, tomato. tomato. Yeah. And then we're going to add in the my favorite uh, cilantro. Oh, oh, I'm to bring that the freshness of cilantro. Yes, exactly. It brings almost everything alive. Yeah. And we've got one small chopped jalapeno here. Now, of course, take the seeds out of the jalapeno because it's the hottest part of mm. the jalapeno. Mm -hmm. And so we've seeded the jalapeno. And of course, we've got one small um, diced, minced, really um, um, yellow white onion. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as well, um, the you're going to get the juice of um, juice of one whole lime in in, in, in here. And some some uh, sea salt and some uh, pepper, mm. and we've got a little bit of horseradish just for a little bit of a kick. kick yeah. mm. And so about two tablespoons of horseradish. So basically, we marinate this up, and what we got then is this final. Um, oh, that's the final product. Yes. Yeah, so because it needs to marinate at least an hour. So yeah. that so all, all the, the flavors go through, uh, yeah. all go yeah, through yeah, yeah. and beautifully. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to put this in our beautiful martini, um, mm. which have been chilled. So about you, about three quarters of a cup of uh, the mixture into the martini glass. Um, you can use a wine glass. You can yeah, use anything yeah, you have. Yeah. Well, of course, and I see you've rimmed them as well. Yes. Yeah, so I've used celery salt in this, and of course mm -hmm. that's optional depending on your flavor and your taste profile. Yeah, yeah. And basically now what we're doing is we're making a Caesar uh, kind of uh, mixture to put over top of the uh, oh, really? martini. So I've got some ice in the uh, shaker. We're going to leave the vodka out for right now. Oh, it is, really? It is optional. No, go ahead. Put it in. Let him try some. Go, go <laughs> no, ahead. No, we can oh, add no, it after. Okay. We can add yeah, it after. Yeah, yeah. And so same thing, some, wor some Worcester sauce, about four drops of that. And I'm using, instead of traditional Tabasco, I really like the Sriracha. And it gives a little more taste profile, a little more depth yeah, in, yeah. in now, flavor. Can, can the folks at home buy that sometimes? Yes, you can get this at the supermarket. This okay. is a, this is a okay. um, yeah. Sta so. a staple kind of ingredient. Yeah, it is a staple ingredient. It might help if I actually oh, open okay. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there we go. So basically what we're going to do is we're just going to shake this up. Mm. And, uh, oh, no, more horseradish. Oh. Put the horse oh, horseradish okay. is, uh, we use horseradish in our Caesars at Yellow Belly. It is our signature. Put any lime in there? Or? And no, we've, okay. got, uh, we've got lime in, in here, so okay. we don't need the lime. We're going to garnish the thing with lime. Oh, so, ba so basically now what we've got is this beautiful shrimp salad mm. uh, martini that we're going to, and this will be done table side. So the, the actual oh, yeah. mixology of it will be done table side. Nice. Oh, and nice looking, yeah. eh? And of course, our garnish of, now you want to squeeze the fresh lime juice on it. I would anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah And of yeah. course, then an olive as, right. as a, as a uh, garnish as well. Those and aren't of course, Newfoundland shrimp, Brenda. They will get <laughs> <laughs> those ones out. They're just for garnish. And <laughs> they're not Newfoundland shrimp for sure. And of course, it does come with a cocktail fork because yeah. the thing is, is that it is a salad. Once you've gotten the liquid out of it, you can then finish it off. Finish it off. Once the you pork. eat the salad, you drink down the liquid yeah, at the end. Absolutely. And what a beautiful um, uh, salad. I think martini. it's great. I think, I think it's absolutely great. And of course, we have it here as well as um, <clears throat> as a salad, just a cold salad. And on the top here, instead of the um, in a, in the cocktail, we've mm. got a roumoulade sauce on the top, which is oh. a beautiful mayonnaise Creole style. That is delicious. It's good, eh? Oh man, oh man! I'm <laughs> yeah. going to have that the next time I'm down. Perfect. Anyway, uh, thank you for being on the show. Oh no, thank you. And that's Pleasure. it for this edition of One Chef, One Critic. And it's best to use them when baking at room temperature. Oh, why at room temperature? Well, it, 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 it I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I read it somewhere. What was it going to say? <laughs>